in the ACC tournament. That's what Maryland did tonight. 71-64 over Florida State. From Greensboro, we remind you the ACC Sports Center on the air tomorrow, beginning our semifinal coverage, beginning at 1 o'clock. Then it's Virginia Wake Forest at 1.30, Maryland and North Carolina. After that, about 3.30. On behalf of Dan Bonner, Bucky Waters, Bob Rathman, this is Paul Cameron saying so long, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball. The Ray Comet. From Salt Lake City, it's the first step on the road to the Final Four. At the Huntsman Center, first round West Region action between the Gonzaga Bulldogs and the Maryland Terrapins. The winner of this game will meet the 11th seed, Texas, on Saturday. Earlier today, Cincinnati and UConn also advancing. Welcome everyone to Salt Lake City with Derek Dickey, Ted Robinson. Maryland is here as the third seed, a most unusual finish to their season as they had to play four games without their coach Gary Williams, hospitalized, battling pneumonia. But Gary Williams is back. He is here. He is ready. And he talked to us yesterday about his physical condition. I can't afford to lose too much more weight. You know, there's not too much more to go. Um, so hopefully uh, I can stay calm. Although I um, haven't done that for 27 years, so I, I don't like my chances. What a big inspirational lift it has to be having Gary Williams back on the bench for the Terrapins. Let's see if he can give enough of that adrenaline to the players so they can come out and play hard. If he needs inspiration, all he has to do is look at Joe Smith. Oh, Joe Smith is a candidate for the National Player of the Year because he's put up great numbers all season, continued to get better. 21 points, 10 rebounds, 3 block shots. Joe Smith is a player that I would love to have in my lineup any day. Gonzaga comes here from Spokane, Washington, featuring an Australian shooting guard named John John Rilly, who broke Hank Gather's WCC tournament scoring record. John Rilly had a sensational tournament. What an outstanding long-range shooter he is. 20 of 28 from three-point land in the tournament. Also, 96 total points, had a 32-point game tournament MVP. As we look at the starting lineups, it is a smaller Gonzaga team. The one big man they have is Paul Rogers, their 6'11 center, also an Australian. And Maryland with that tremendous fivesome, a starting five that has played every game together for two years and uh, plays a lot of minutes. Play a lot of minutes, apply a lot of pressure. Can Gonzaga handle it? Dan Fitzgerald is the Gonzaga coach, 13th season behind the bench, also four years as the athletic director. The first ever trip for Gonzaga to the NCAA. Art McDonald is our lead official. Dan Christman and Kevin Fair work with him in this game. Gonzaga, 21 and 8 for the year. They've won 10 of their last 11. Maryland, 24 and 7. Maryland is in the white, Gonzaga in blue. And Kyle Dixon, the Gonzaga point guard, controls the tap. Gonzaga has to be patient. They cannot rush things against Maryland with their extremely aggressive defense. Look for and take the open shot. And the first one is their point guard, Kyle Dixon. A junior, junior college transfer, scores 12 points a game. And Dixon out of the steal. And the ball intended for Johnny Rhodes. Zags want to push the ball up the court. They're very active on the defensive end, and a lot of people are going to be surprised how well they play as a team. Much of the year, their game was to be patient and then do this, shoot threes. Really shoots them more often than anyone. Well, Dan Fitzgerald said he wants to shoot the three. He knows that he cannot match up inside with Joe Smith. Look for the shot on the perimeter and put it up, put it up, put it up. Oh, look at Simpkins. What a, what a display of strength as he just ripped that ball away from John Kinlock. Oh, Dwayne Simpkins has tremendous upper body strength. A junior out of Fort Washington, Maryland, likes to get the ball around the basket and post up smaller guards. Take a look at Dwayne Simpkins, number 10, as he's going to just rip this ball away right out of the hand of John Kinlock and take it back up toward the basket. But he's an aggressive player when it comes to the ball on the floor or when it's on their defensive boards. X3 hip call for the game's first foul. And it's hip who's chasing John Rilly. Rilly has great range on a shot and extraordinarily quick release. 
see if the Terrapins try to take really out of the game. John's only about 6'5", listed at 170 pounds, but physically, the question is, can he withstand the pressure that he's going to receive? Well, Gary Williams told us yesterday he knows that Joe Smith has to touch the ball a lot in this game because he's going to have mismatches inside all night. Oh, absolutely. Joe Smith is going to be double teamed tonight, at least double teamed. So in order for him to be effective, whoever the man is that's coming flagging off is going to have to shoot the ball from the perimeter or going to have to catch the ball and look to drive right away. Hit, hits a three. Now a trap on Dixon. Three hip has gained a few pounds last year. He was only listed about 170 pounds. This year he's listed at over 200 pounds. I don't know where it is. I tell you, sure doesn't look it. No, but he's an outstanding player. Very wiry, good ball handler, and as you see, also, also can shoot the three-point shot very, very well. This Maryland team, incredible experience playing together. And they still don't have a senior out of the starting five. Oh, that is so impressive. Foul on Dixon. Dixon. Dixon, the one man Gonzaga really feels they can't play without. No, no, no. But when you when you have a go-to guy, if you're Maryland like Joe Smith, Joe does not force things. He does not take a lot of bad shots. He only averages, as you mentioned, just over 11, almost 12 shots a game. And his teammates respect that because Joe wants to be a team player. He wants to help distribute the ball. And everybody continue to grow together. That number might be the most remarkable thing about Smith, averaging only 11 shots a game. But he gets to the free throw lines about eight and a half times a game, and he averages less than two fouls per game. 6-2, Maryland. Kinlock, also a good three-point shooter. Jason Rubright. Long rebound to Rilly. Rilly's not looking to force anything right now. Rogers is fouled. Hey, this this thing at Gonzaga team is not afraid of Maryland. They are playing a very aggressive style of play, looking to get the ball down on the block, pitch it back out, and get some dribble penetration and take the ball right to Joe Smith. Get him in foul trouble. Paul well, Rogers from Adelaide, Australia. One thing, I had a chance to talk earlier this week with the coach from Santa Clara conference rivals of Gonzaga and they said no matter what the talent difference will be Gonzaga will not back down that's the personality of their team and it starts really with Dan Fitzgerald their coach oh it has to and you have to instill that in your players you have to sell them on the idea that every game you go into you have a chance to win and as a team if you realize that if your coach is telling you that you're not afraid of a big game like this Ball and Chief Booth tips it home. That's what you have to be afraid of if you're Dan Fitzsimmons. Maryland coming up with steals, coming up with offensive rebounds, and just keeping the ball in their front court. A six-point Maryland lead on Simpkins' layup. And Dixon is going to be called for an offensive foul. And that is two early fouls on the Gonzaga point guard. Well, that could be a major league problem on Kyle Dixon if he has to leave the game. Dan Fitzgerald is livid on the Gonzaga bench. And a few objects have been thrown on the floor. Watch the left hand of Kyle Dixon. He's reaching out, actually trying to find Simpkins as he's dribbling down the court. And I believe that's why the official made that call. It was enough body contact to call a defensive foul. However, by reaching his left hand out, Dixon does pick up his second foul of the game and has to go to the bench. His replacement is Kevin Williams, a 6'1 sophomore from Foster City, California. Back in the area. Yes, it is. Girls stopping grounds. They don't miss.
Dixon at the defensive end, they will miss him just running. He's the leader. Leadership. Yeah, absolutely. They strip. Johnny Rhodes, the great steel master of Maryland, feeding Simpkins and Rhodes with a putback. You have to give Dwayne Simpkins an assist on that play because he knew if he just put the ball up on the board, you got a chance for Johnny Rhodes to get the offensive rebound on the other side. Gonzaga seeing Kinlock stripped and a three. Johnny Rhodes. And this is the storm that Gonzaga feared. We saw Tennessee Chattanooga fall prey too early today. Yeah, you, you, you have to question making good decisions with your pass. Use a lot of ball fakes, be aggressive, and try to get the ball in the offensive front court. Paul Rogers off the feet from Kinlock. And a travel on Simpkins. Now we get to the first timeout. Maryland leading Gonzaga by nine. Fitzgerald has waited a long time for this moment in the NCAA tournament, and he's very upset that his point guard, Kyle Dixon, was taken out with two fouls quick, and he's let the officials know. He just wants the foul situation to be more even in his eyes, that he doesn't feel like Gonzaga's getting some of the same calls that Maryland is getting. Right now, Dan Fitzgerald wishes, as you see how the turnovers have impacted already. Get a piece, for Maryland. Get a piece, this is where right Fitzgerald now. wishes he could reach please, back at a time and please, bring back please, the first please, point guard even put it to Gonzaga. Uh, a young man named John Stockton, who only played one year for Fitzgerald, but uh, what an outstanding talent Stockton is, and he still lives up in the area and plays with the kids all summer. Hip with the basket, X3, hip with five. When John Stockton heard that the, the team was going to the NCAA tournament, he sent a telegram to the Gonzaga team congratulating them and also made phone calls to each one of the players trying to find out if they were in and also let them know how he felt about uh, his school finally getting a bid to the NCAA tournament. Stockton lives about four blocks from the Gonzaga campus as X-ray hip is called, knocking down Williams on the screen. Two fouls on hip. Gonzaga's going to have to get scoring production, rebounding production from other players. John really has not really taken a good look at the basket so far, but he's still other team, other members of his team have to step up, such as Scott Snyder or Scott Morgan, who come off the bench. They both shoot about 50% from the field. Well, it took five and a half minutes, but that was John Rilly's first shot, and it went in for three. Kinlock spots up. Well, Gonzaga, that's their game. 41% as a team from the three-point arc. And they shoot 50, almost 50%, 49% from the field. And it sounds like this crowd is going to give them a little emotional lift. They're on their side so far. Yep. Joe Smith big and really reaching in. Picks up the foul. John Rilly's first foul. Off the Maryland bench, Wayne Bristol. 6-1 senior, replacing Hip, who has two fouls. And Mario Lucas also went off the Maryland bench. First basket for Joe Smith. He's fun to watch. Every game he seems to get a little bit better, a little more confident in his, in his attempts to go for the loose balls. He, he's avoiding contact and you know he's tipping the ball out of the out of the hands of his defender. Rogers offensive foul. Smith goes down and Rogers is called. And that's two on Paul Rogers. Gary Williams is down 10 pounds from uh, several weeks back. Gary trying to remain calm, and, and you can tell inside he's just turning and turning and turning away. Normally he's a very emotional person, very charismatic on the sideline. Tough shot down low, and Mario yeah. Lucas knocks it down. his range. I'm not sure they found anything that's out of his range. 
will see him at times take a shot that appears to be five or six steps behind the three-point arc. Great pass by Rillen hitting Kinlaw. But John is an excellent ball player. He's not just a scorer, not just a shooter. He averages about four rebounds and three assists a game. Jerry Smith. He doesn't shoot many threes. He has a good percentage when he does. Snyder off the bench. Scott Snyder, 6'9", junior. Gonzaga staying in there while their point guard Dixon sits. Well, when you don't have a point guard, you have to go to plan B, which usually is try to move the ball around the perimeter and get it inside. Certainly you want to get it in the hands of your scorer, John, really. But if it's not there, you play good aggressive defense, and you come up with the loose balls and easy baskets. Chinlock picks up his first foul. Already you might see the pace of the game. I see Rogers, the Gonzaga center, bending over, trying to breathe deeply. Maryland leading Gonzaga by five. In Salt Lake City, Maryland in the white, leading Gonzaga by five. Gonzaga has stayed close despite the fact they're starting point guard. Kyle Dixon is sitting with two fouls. Smith is out of the game for Maryland right now. Gary Williams going deeper into his bench. Matt Kavarik in the game. Bristol trying one inside. It's sent away by Gonzaga. Good defensive series by Gonzaga. Not allowing the ball to get down on the block where Maryland wanted to for that high percentage shot and not giving up anything around the hoop. Rodgers playing outside. Rodgers is playing with two fouls for Gonzaga. And Fitzgerald choosing not to have Dixon play with two. Really? Not a kind of shot to see him take off. And, and the quick release and Kovarik with the basket. Kovarik's just a sophomore. He plays in, played in every game this year, had one start. really goes up. Out of bounds to Gonzaga. Maryland started quickly. Gonzaga has not really drilled threes. Really has made only one so far. And a quiet start for Joe Smith. As it certainly has been a quiet start for Joe Smith, but he's not a player that you worry about. The thing I worry about is the press that Maryland applies. They're still going to try to force the pace here uh, as the game progresses, and can Gonzaga take care of the ball? We certainly saw Texas wear Oregon down in the second half. And a bump and a foul on Mario Lucas. Four fouls on Maryland, six on Gonzaga. Gary Williams said he still feels tired, and he's trying to judge himself when he feels tired and shut it down. Not be as intense as he has. Williams, tough shot. at a game earlier this year at Clemson where he not only perspired through his shirt but through his tongue. Mm. Now that is serious. That's very serious. I've seen people perspire through their jacket but through their tie. I've never heard of that. Booth Rhodes screaming for the ball and missing a three. Quick to the ball, Maryland. Booth has a block inside and then... Gonzaga's Scott Snyder touching the ball while he's out of bounds. Good hustle by the Zags to block another shot underneath the basket. Snyder did a terrific job with contesting the shot as it was going, the attempt was made, but almost kept the ball in bounds. The Zags are doing a great job so far in this defense, not letting Maryland pull away. Joe Smith back for Maryland. David Cole in for the first time for Gonzaga. Bristol. And that 
gets a pretty drop. And a three for Wayne Bristol, scores just four points a game. And here's Dixon back in for Gonzaga. And Fitzgerald not wanting to sit his point guard out for the entire half. quarterback out there on the floor. You need someone to direct the ball and get the ball into the hands of your scorers. Really with a tip, but Bristol picks it up. And Bristol will go to the line. Take a look at this ball as Maryland trying to get it out. John really gets a piece of it, but one of the three seniors on this ball club, Wayne Bristol, gets the ball in his hands on his offensive end and takes it right through the defense to try to put it up on the glass. Wayne Bristol, a player that, as much as anyone, can appreciate what has happened to Maryland basketball the last three years. He came aboard when things were not good at Maryland. Maryland is starting to continue to grow. And will keep it as X3 hit will replace Bristol. Nine minutes and one second to play in the first half. Prior to Gary Williams' arrival, this is now his sixth year, Bob Wade was the coach here at Maryland, and the school went on probation. And, you know, it was very tough building the program back up, and Gary Williams and his staff have done an outstanding job. Now getting back into Baltimore, doing a lot of recruiting in that area of some outstanding talent. Keith Booth being one of those. That's what Gary Williams has done, really repaired relations with a great school like Dunbar that's produced so many terrific players. It's always hard to do, trying to reestablish yourself, not only with the high school coaches, but with the parents, and gain their confidence once again that you're doing the best thing for the student athletes. Dixon's pass unable to be handled down low. Seven Gonzaga turnovers. Hip. Booth. Missed the putback, and Rogers started with the rebound for Gonzaga. And Dixon, as he takes it across the lane, is fouled by Matt Kovarik. Oh, Rogers at six foot eleven for uh, Gonzaga is not a big shot blocker, but the fact that he's just almost seven feet tall, he takes up a lot of space inside, and it looks like Maryland is trying to rush shots on their offensive end. They just missed a couple point blank opportunities. What we're also seeing is what a team like Gonzaga fears: good enough defense that really. John really can't get into the game. Yeah, and, and that's what I was concerned about coming in. You know, John's a terrific player and an explosive scorer, but can he get himself open? Does he have enough stamina? We're at a tremendous altitude out here in, in Salt Lake City. Can he get himself open quickly enough to be able to get his shot off? Travel call on X3 hit. Timeout with Maryland up 11. And Coach Billy Hahn, who arrived at Maryland with Gary Williams, actually stood in for Gary when he was in the hospital. And for four games, he coached the Terrapins. He said he was never happier to see Gary get out of the hospital and get back to join the team. But he did a terrific job. The Maryland, the Terrapins were 2-2 two two under Billy Hahn. I know one thing, when Billy Hahn came over to visit with us yesterday, his voice sounded better. I mean, four games as a head coach, and that voice box was shredded. Oh. Not only during the game, but in practice, Billy's a very energetic coach and also very animated on the sideline. Good play by Rilly. Sets up Jason Rubright. John really creates so much attention when he has the ball in his hands, the defense has to react, and if he looks to make that extra pass, he can find his teammates open. Look at him come back down with his own tip and lay it in. Gonzaga's running a zone, and Maryland had a play designed out of a out of a timeout to try to get him a pass on a high lob. Bulldogs turn it over. Aaron pass, and the Maryland pressure again, creating problems for Gonzaga. 
Funny thing about Dan Fitzgerald and the Gonzaga team, he said in his all his years at Gonzaga, this might be about his sixth or seventh best team. <laughs> and it just so happened this was the year they they got hot at the conference tournament and made it. That is what's important, to get hot at the right time at the end of the year and hopefully carry that momentum into postseason play. And they were rewarded this season by an NCAA tournament bid. Last year, Gonzaga was the best team in the West Coast Conference, but they were upset in the postseason tournament. They did go to the NIT and beat Stanford in the first round in their first ever postseason action. Well, this year, they beat Portland in the championship of the uh, of the uh, West Coast Conference championship. John really off. Rose was running the floor. Doesn't get it. Simpkins does. Gonzaga has just one basket in the last six and a half minutes. See, the Terrapins are playing pretty consistent defense. Kinlock lost the ball when he came down. Johnny Rose. Look at Smith go high. Great try. There's nothing Gonzaga can do as Maryland will keep the ball when when the Terrapins get that active on the boards. Oh, indeed. And, and Johnny, Johnny Rhodes is, and also Keith Booth. And you got extra hip. And, and certainly Joe Smith, a good athlete. And every time the ball goes up on their offensive glass, you're going to see three or four hands go up above the rim after it. Simpkins hits a three. <laughs> Fourteen, the largest lead in the first half. Four on two. Kinlock has it rimming out. Here we are, approaching five minutes to go in the first half, and John really has had just four shots for Gonzaga. And it's almost unheard of because John is normally a very integral part of the offense for the Zags. Rubright ahead. And Jason Rubright, senior, gets his second basket. In fact, he has the only two Gonzaga scores in a nearly eight-minute span. I think what Dan Fitzgerald might tell his team at halftime is, guys, we're not shooting the ball well from the perimeter. Why not try to get some baskets before the defense gets set? Get some transition baskets. Those certainly could be higher, op higher percentage opportunities. Rogers running the middle, missed the dunk. Trying not to charge into Simpkins. And Lucas gets it for Maryland at the other end. I like the aggressive play by the Zags, trying to take the ball strong to the basket. Maryland 34, Gonzaga 22. Exceptional sheen. Oh, very good color. Friends. Yes. Oh, such stateliness, such majesty. Mary. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. The best of show, more. Back there, an 11 seed, not much of a surprise in Texas advancing tonight to play the winner of this game. Cincinnati survived Temple and UConn. Had an easy win over Tennessee Chattanooga earlier today in Salt Lake City. A lot of people feel like Texas should have been a lower seed than 11, but uh, looks like the Longhorns are proving that you know, they are a very confident basketball team capable of being explosive on the offensive end and aggressive on the defensive end. Shot clock under five. And Rogers with blocked out. Joe Smith not on the floor right now for Maryland. 
Gonzaga has played its starting five for a large chunk of this half. Maryland has substituted freely. They set up to Kinlock. With Joe Smith on the floor, the Terrapins are a much better offensive rebounding team. They have an advantage right now on the offensive boards, 14 to 4 over Gonzaga. And second chance points, they've scored 16. Gonzaga only six. Good break there, run with Bristol getting the basket. Jason Rubright. That's a three. So he's scored seven here in the first half, matching his season average. Rubright's an excellent three-point shooter. Shoots about 45% from long range, but that play was set up by John really setting a down screen on his man. And a travel call. Coming up on Pinsoil at the half, Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg will take you on live look-ins on the Around the country, the final games of this first day of the NCAA tournament. Already terrific upsets as the day opened with Arizona and Oklahoma both being knocked out. See close games taking place elsewhere in the final games of the day. Oklahoma State's a team that has a chance to advance with uh, big country. Brian Reeves. Philadelphia. Put four teams, the city of Philadelphia, into the tournament. Temple and uh, Penn have already lost to Drexel, facing a tough throw tonight in Oklahoma State. Of course, their fourth team, Villanova, is one that has a great shot to beat Seattle. Yes, they do. They are playing better than any team in the country right now. They're on a roll. Jim Calhoun, the UConn coach, told us yesterday he really envisions Villanova being the team that gets out of the East. Shot clock running out. And Kenlock nearly knocked that down. Nobody stopped Booth. Maryland back well. Dixon going to the basket. Rubright missing a tip. Going to get back with it. And Art McDonald definitely <laughs> called a foul. I think he got the, got the play. The crowd understood that that was a foul. <laughs> Simpkins called, called for his first foul. Sixteen foul. We found out one thing about Ernie McDonald. He's got good lungs. He's got great lungs. He's got a lot of air. At this altitude. <laughs> That's right. That's impressive. A minute nineteen to go in the half. Got Dixon out for Gonzaga and Brian Williams back in. But not much room in this first half for John Rillett. Gonzaga has to be very, very careful. They're right around the, the danger mark, but down 11 points. They still have to continue to be aggressive, get to the free throw line, cut this lead under 10 before half. So he's Simpkins second foul at a seven on the Terps. And right, Gonzaga will shoot a one more here. Say that Maryland's a good rebounding team. Gonzaga with a total of four. Maryland with 25 rebounds. Well, playing in the nation's best conference, the ACC, Maryland out-rebounded its opponents by an average of six a game. So, if Gonzaga can stay anywhere near that, yeah. you'd have to say that's a success. Yeah, but they need to shoot a high percentage. They need to continue to look inside to get the ball. I think Rubright has done a good job on the offensive boards, but if Gonzaga can get the ball underneath the free throw area, they have a chance to make some shots or at least get back to that free throw line. Joe Smith, second basket. That's strong, very, very strong. From the backside, John really hit the ball as Joe Smith had it behind his head. He still took it up to the glass. Maryland leading by 13. John really not even able to touch the ball. Johnny Rhodes defending him in the latter portion of this first half. Williams trying to create for Rilly. And he comes down to the ball. Rilly, as well as the crowd, felt like there was a foul committed. John actually stopped in the middle of his attempt to shoot the ball. He felt like he was hit across the head. No 
it has been a frustrating half for John Rilly. And now Maryland has the chance for the last shot. And out of the scrum, the ball will stay with Maryland. 2.2 seconds remaining. Maryland has time for a catch and shoot. Watching Smith here. He'll go up. Boy, look at that beautiful touch. That is something. Joe Smith, seven points. A gorgeous shot to end the half. And the Maryland Terrapins go off the floor, leading Gonzaga by 15. Great defensive effort by the Maryland Terrapins the first half. Can they bring it back out the second? Maryland 40, Gonzaga 25 of the half. Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg have Penn Goyle on the half after this word and a message from your local station. Is yeah, we're with Derek Dickey, Ted Robinson. Gonzaga hoped John really could do what he did in their postseason tournament. It did not happen in the first half. What has not happened so far, John really only one for six from the field, but what has to happen? You see John has taken shots from the perimeter. Look at this area over here. Nowhere has John tried to get the ball in, not even in the paint. He has to start being a lot more aggressive with the ball in his hand. John really with just that one three-point basket in the first half, only three threes in the half for Gonzaga, and that is a major part of their weaponry and has not been strong for Gonzaga in this first half. And the 14 offensive rebounds, the other huge number for Maryland. Major story. Whenever Maryland is able to control their offensive boards, they don't lose very many games, but as long as they can continue to take care of it, they have a chance to put this game away early here in the second half. Here's Riley's. I saw that first shot from the left side of the floor. <laughs> I think he was looking over our shoulder. X three hip. And of course the key for Maryland. You're seeing UConn stumble a bit in the first part of the second half of their game today. Maryland does not want to let Gonzaga feel like they have a chance to come back. Well, Gonzaga still is an aggressive team that has the capability of scoring points and playing good, solid defense and chipping away at a lead, but they have to have their lead score. 16 points a game, John really has only had three points in the game so far. Dixon is short with his shot. And Johnny Rhodes clears for the Terrapins. So Smith actually tipped that ball. Oh, good move by Hip. Very strong. 11 for X3 Hip. He's the leading turf scorer here. And a Maryland foul in the backcourt. X3's dad is here in the audience. x ray senior. Full-blooded Cherokee Indian on the right side in the red sweater. X re Cherokee for Little Brave. Daughter's X, or excuse me, his sister's sister? name is X Lee. It means Little Sunshine. Yes, baby. Movement without the ball in a set play by, the, by Gonzaga. Trying to get the ball down inside the paint a little bit more. Dan Fitzgerald, during the West Coast Conference Tournament, explained his team's offense by saying, what we do is get the round thing to the ball thing. <laughs> the round thing, of course, the ball. The ball thing is John Rilly. And one of the better explanations of an offense I've heard in a long time. <laughs> Hey, we also talked about the influence John Stockton has on these players as he plays with them during the summer. He lives in Spokane, and the last three years, Gonzaga has had a player on the all-conference team, and this year, Kyle Dixon, a point guard, after playing with John the last couple of seasons, was honored by them being on the all-conference team. David Cole in for Gonzaga, replacing Kinlock. The story of John Rilly's arrival at Gonzaga is a wonderful story. He finished high school in Australia from uh, Toowoomba, Australia, and decided he did not have any interest in playing college basketball in Australia. The problem was he didn't have any money to get to the United States, so he spent two and a half years working. And the assortment of jobs he held in 
Australia. He collected shopping carts, he flipped burgers, he was a stock boy in a supermarket, and he sliced bacon to make sausages. And after two and a half years, he saved enough money to get to the state of Washington where he went to a junior college. And was subsequently discovered there by Dan Fitzgerald. That is a true story that uh, I think a lot of people have to understand that if you set a goal for yourself, you have the ability to achieve that goal. You just have to have a plan going in and follow through with that plan. Joe Smith picking up the foul, his first. David Cole's first points for Gonzaga. And Johnny Rhodes has seven now for Maryland. And Rhodes is slowly inching in on the all-time steals list at... Uh, in the ACC. He's now number nine in the ACC. He's number one at Maryland. Broke Walt Williams' record after only 62 games. Really finally gets open. That's his best look at the basket so far. Well, sometimes a guy like John really, who's, who's slight of, of stature, after working so hard to try to get open, by the time you get the ball in your hand, especially at this altitude, he doesn't have the legs left to be able to get the shot up to the basket. Really just uh, shaved his head this year, and there was some concern that might have inspired a, some sympathy from his teammates, but uh, no, he's the only one. <laughs> that would cause Dan Fitzgerald a lot of problems. Get the ball, the, the round thing to the ball thing. Yeah. He had 12 of them over there. And Cole knocks down a three. David Cole's about a 38% three-point shooter and shoots 44% from the field. Averages only five points a game, but he is starting to turn it up the volume just a little bit and look for that, uh, look for the basket. 16-point Maryland lead. Nearly three minutes into the second half. Gary Williams looking pretty fresh. Well, I don't know. He's uh, He hasn't gotten up off the bench. He hasn't walked the bench like he normally does. He hasn't expended a lot of energy yelling at the officials. But uh, he's, a, he's a man that we have to keep our eye on and hope that he doesn't get affected by the emotion of this evening. This will be Gonzaga basketball. Very similar in a lot of ways in their defense, Derek. It looks like to uh, Connecticut we saw today. A lot of good athletes, yes. a lot of arms and legs always in the way of a pass. Always in the passing lane. Even though Gonzaga seems to have good spacing, Maryland anticipates the pass. Yes, you may get beat back door, but hey, you got Joe Smith back there who's capable of blocking three shots a game, but changing probably four or five shots a game. Matt Kovarik back in for Maryland. A pass right to Dixon. Oh, that's a nice play. Dixon went right at the goal and is fouled. Actually went right through Matt Kovarik on his way to the basket. He comes up with an excellent steal and continues to take the ball right to the front of the rim. Good hustle play. Kyle Dixon, after he comes up with this deal, has already made up his mind. He's not going to give up any territory, and that's good athletic ability to be able to go up, hang in the air, still concentrate, and put the ball through the hoop. Oh, Cole tips in the miss. A nice lift for Gonzaga from David Cole, a senior. Seven points here in the second half. Only down 12. Gonzaga has a chance to get under 10 if they can continue with the aggressive defense. There's no question the crowd wants the underdog here to at least get back in the ball game. And this foul's going against the Terrapins. So Joe Smith might have picked it up. So Joe Smith, who averages only two and a half fouls a game, now has four. Would be big. Still 16 minutes and 25 seconds to go in this game. Really? That's what Gonzaga needed. And this crowd has found a team to root for as Maryland takes timeout.
Gonzaga has scored the last 10 points. And it took them just a minute and 12 seconds to do that. And they've cut Maryland's biggest lead of the game, which was 19, down to 9. I'm playing good, aggressive defense, getting in the passing lane. John really has given the team and the crowd a big spark, getting his second basket, a three-point basket, just a moment ago. But he also has five assists and five rebounds on the evening. Solid team player. Fans in Salt Lake City looking for someone to embrace. They've taken the Zags off. Good strip by Dixon. Four on two. Crowd wanted really to take that shot, but X3 hit did not allow him to pull the trigger. Cole does. And it's almost picked up by Rudright, but Maryland comes out. Keep moving. It has the baseline. And X3 hit. Shuts down really at one end, scores at the other. That's a tough move by X3. He has gotten so much more aggressive and assertive with his style of play, taking the ball to the basket and also rebounding. Playing such tough defense near midcourt, runs Gonzaga's available time way down. Yes, they do. <laughs> right. Nice move inside, and there's a tip by Rilling. Good job by Gonzaga to try to get the ball down inside. At least try to get within four or five feet of the basket. If you put it up and you have offensive rebounding position, you might get lucky and get a stick back. Front rows. <laughs> Wyatt for Booth, just a second field goal. Baskets like that come from playing together. The third consecutive years these players have played together. Rogers from Rilly. Well, Rilly now, he's only scored eight points, but he has six rebounds and six assists. Really outstanding job. We call it sometimes being a decoy, but John really is not looking to force a shot with a defender in his face. He's looking to take whatever the defense, x ray hip in this case, is giving. Rose lost it, picked it back up, and there's a collective tip. And finally, rebound ripped down by Rogers. Four Maryland Terrapins were on the offensive glass. They still could not put the ball in the basket. Oh. And Rudright saves it, and he's pushed out of bounds. A foul call on X3 hip. Team fouls now in the second half. One against Gonzaga, seven against Maryland. That's big, especially with Joe Smith sitting on the bench with four fouls. Gonzaga has an opportunity to continue to be aggressive. See if Kyle Dixon will now start to get a little bit more aggressive with his dribble penetration to the front of the rim. Just seven points for Joe Smith, who sits. The same number for Jason Rubright at the line. For Jason Rudright, Gonzaga, down 19 moments ago, now with his seven. Slowly tipping away by playing good defense and coming up with defensive rebounds. Maryland's going to crash the offensive boards. If they get the defensive rebound, they have a chance to kick the ball back down and score. The Simpkins with a silencer. Ten points for Dwayne Simpkins. by Dixon, and Rubright gets hammered. Well, Zag is doing the one thing that you would not think that Derek would be able to do, get to the foul line. Well, they're doing an excellent job of that, and you have to have a point guard who wants to get inside. You take a look at Kyle Dixon as he turns the corner. That's the key to this play, turning the corner, getting your shoulders by the defense, and being in, able to get inside and make them react to you. As that happens, you look for his teammate, Rubright, able to get the ball up for hopefully a foul shot attempt. Shooter. 
Better shooting by Gonzaga in this half. And a big story developing. Maryland now has Keith Booth with three fouls, Pip with three, and Joe Smith sitting with four. Scott Morgan, 6'7", junior, makes his first appearance. Jason Woodwright sitting. Chipped in 11 for Gonzaga. There's Booth, and Hope gets the lob. Paul Rogers is doing an outstanding job with being active on the defensive end. He's come up with a couple of excellent rebounds, but this time he actually challenges the shot as it's going up by Johnny Rose and blocks it and keeps the ball in play. Gonzaga was not able to come up with that ball, but you still have to like their aggressive intensity right now. They've turned it up another notch. Four blocks by Rogers. Michigan and Western Kentucky down to the wire. Oklahoma State now comfortable with Drexel, but Maryland was comfortable here just about three, four minutes ago. Zaga just doesn't seem to want to go away, and that's without their leading scorer, John really actually being a factor in this game on the offensive end. My goodness. Well, a wild scramble, and Maryland out with the ball. sequence there. Indeed it was, and both ends. Dan Fitzgerald is awfully upset, as is Gary Williams. He thought something should have been called a long time ago. Take a look at this sequence. There's a lot of contact, and no fouls are called as players dive on the floor. You, you really have to stop and get control of the play as an officiating crew. So that no one gets hurt. Every hit takes a pretty nasty fall at the end of this play, and fortunately he was able to get back up. Fourteen points now for X-Ray Hip tonight. His 90th start at Maryland. He's never missed a game. Booth steals it. That's a three-point play for Maryland. That's tough. That's just good solid, aggressive play by the junior out of Baltimore. Dixon takes it back from Lucas, and Rogers puts it home. Dixon did not give up on that ball as he lost the handle on it. He stayed right in there. We heard so much about John Ridley coming in, Derek, and you watch this Gonzaga team, and you, you have to come by loving Kyle Dixon's ball. No question about it. I like his aggressive play when asking Coach Dan Fitzsimmons yesterday about his team and, you know, who are the better defenders on the team. He said that Kyle Dixon has to be one of those players, not because he's really a, really a hard-nosed defensive player, but he's just aggressive with his style of play. Dixon called for the hand check. His third. Here in Salt Lake City, Maryland leading Gonzaga by 10. Maryland up 19 early in this half. Gonzaga at one point got it down to six. Maryland continuing to play without Joe Smith. And the Simpkins hits another three. Every time Gonzaga seems to make a run to get the score under 10. Now let's go to Dayton. We'll join Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery for the Michigan Western Kentucky game. Timeline, give it to King, let him create, or Jackson running off one of those post bumps for a turnaround jumper or a dribble to the goal. Michigan led 59-45, a 14-point lead with 8.25 left. Now with nine seconds remaining, Western Kentucky has come all the way back. Jackson's 12 of 18 from the floor tonight, and King is 7 of 10. They have truly been the fab two tonight. And they still have the timeout to play with two if they get it up over the half-court line and then want to call the other one. Or if they can't get it in, but they do to Taylor. Taylor, Jackson, King, and Giant Conlon on the floor. Jackson lost the dribble. 
Western ball with a second and a half left, and they have no timeouts. Trying to get something near half court. They don't want to turn it over, give Michigan the ball back on the baseline. And Jackson cannot run the baseline. A uh, factor he needs to remember. Baston back in, and Conlon goes out for Michigan. A second and a half remaining. They put Baston on the ball. Jackson, long pass. Taylor, good if it goes, but it's in the third row. And we'll have the overtime in the Salt Lake City, Maryland using the three ball to stretch the lead back. Dwayne Simpkins has hit two and Johnny Rhodes one. In Salt Lake City, Maryland and the White has opened up a 16 point lead. Their backboard combination, Rhodes and Simpkins have shot well from the three-point line here in the second half. In fact, both teams have had a good shooting second half, and neither team's star has had a star-like game. Either they, they certainly have not. John really has, has not shot the ball well because x ray Hip has been in his pocket all evening, only three out of ten from the field. But Joe Smith has been the story so far. He only has seven points, but he has four fouls, and he has been on the bench for most of the second half. David Cole shooting here for Gonzaga. We saw John Riley's numbers tonight in the three games that Gonzaga won in their conference tournament. He was 20 for 28 in three-point shooting. That's pretty impressive. Tonight, two for seven. It's very, very impressive, those numbers. However, you don't have a player of the stature of an X3 hip who's 6'8", 210 pounds in your face. Now Gonzaga starting to pick up a slew of fouls. Rubright called for his third. Seven on the Zags. Rodney Elliott, 6'8 freshman from Baltimore in the game for the first time. Called on Paul Rogers. And that will give Elliott another shot. Take a look at the left side of the, of the screen. Watch who steps in first. Jason Rubright gets the call. by 16. Nine and a half to play here in Salt Lake City. Well, Gonzaga made one run early in this half. Maryland stopped it with some threes. Really trying to shoot Gonzaga back in this. Instead, it has been the Maryland guard. Simpkins now with 15 points. Simpkins has done a terrific job with recognizing where the defense is, pulling up, or bringing the ball back out and setting it up and restarting the offense for the Germans. There's a three from Riley. Too far and few between for John Riley. Overtimes around the country today on this first day of the NCAA tournament. Elliott lays it back in for Maryland. Western Kentucky now six up on Michigan with a minute 40 to play in the overtime in Dayton. Well, the Elliott, uh, Gary Williams is telling us is going to be a terrific player for his team. He's just a freshman, as you mentioned, out of Baltimore Dunbar, and he's played in every game this season and one start. Rhodes, nice lean in. Simpkins 
appears to make a lot of terrific decisions running the ball. And that's important. As, as, you, as you continue to advance in the NCAA tournament, you want to have someone who has the ball in their hands, who makes good decisions, does not turn it over, and finds the hot shooter at the right time. So Maryland has equaled its largest lead, 19 points as we approach seven and a half minutes remaining. And they've done the last 10 minutes of play here without Joe Smith. Well, if they continue at this pace, I don't think we're going to see Joe Smith anymore this evening. And then Rudright bodies Elliott. And Rudright picks up his fourth foul. Joe Smith, seven points, four rebounds. He's only played 21 minutes tonight. And Joe usually plays about 33 minutes a game and averages somewhere around 21 points, 10 rebounds, three blocks. Not bad, but, uh, you know, he, he needs to be on the floor. And then hopefully as the team continues to progress, if they do, you know, they're going to have their hands full with just trying to keep him in the game. Normally he only commits a little over two fouls a game, so this is uncharacteristic of his play. He lost some minutes for Rodney Elliott. He'll be back at the line here for the Terrapins. Well, Gonzaga's run earlier in this half has been answered, and the hole they fell into may have been too deep. May have been too deep, but you mentioned that they made a very nice run. They were able to get the score under 10. They got it down to 7. Just could not get over the hump. The Maryland wanted a basket. They got the offensive rebound, a defensive rebound. They got the, the steal, went down and converted, and pulled away almost at will. Hip winding up on Kinlock. Really gets himself free. That's going to get foul on Maryland. John really has an awfully nice rotation on his shot. He has a nice rotation on his passes also. I mean, that's that's something that I've been noticing when he passes a ball. Most of the time you like to see a good backspin, a good underneath rotation on the ball. And, and John has good fundamentals. He needs to be a little bit stronger to compete against a, a Maryland, a Michigan, a, a Duke, you know, teams that, that play good and uh, very physical styles of play. To play in the Big Ten, it might be a little tough for him, but, you know, at Gonzaga, he had a terrific career up there in the West Coast Mountains. left here in Salt Lake City. Maryland trying to advance to a Saturday meeting with Texas. Cincinnati and Connecticut also winning today. They'll play each other Saturday afternoon. And Jim Calhoun, the UConn coach, played the first game today. He was here to watch the beginning of the fourth game at this Maryland game. He said he promised Gary Williams he'd watch the first half. Good stick back. Well, you see just this little flash of Rodney Elliott is potential there. Let's go back to Dayton now and rejoin Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery. Wolverines with 122. Here at the Hutzman Center in Salt Lake City, Maryland in command here, leading by 21 over Gonzaga with three minutes and 30 seconds remaining. After sitting for quite a while, Joe Smith is back in the game for Maryland. Gary Williams obviously wanting to get him a few more minutes before this is over. I think he does. He just wants him to run up and down the court a little bit. The team will practice tomorrow, but Gary Williams wants him to get some game minutes right now. He doesn't necessarily look for him to score, look for him to block shots or rebounds. Just be productive while he's out there. Make some things happen. Three and a half to play is all Maryland. Three and a half to play here in Salt Lake City. Maryland poised in advance to a Saturday meeting with Texas in the second round. 
Dixon drives for Gonzaga. Ball slapped away inside. Maryland has done it without a great contribution from Joe Smith. That layup there, just nine points for Smith tonight. But they haven't needed it. Smith. No, they haven't. They've played terrific defense throughout the effort, throughout the evening and also rebounded the ball very well, giving themselves a chance to score a lot of points and also to get high percentage shots at the basket. John Kinlock with the layup for Gonzaga. Keith Booth has 13 rebounds tonight for Maryland. That is a career high. Wayne Simpkins has scored 17. And X Ray Hip has added 15. A nice stint. Rodney Elliott, freshman, came off the bench here in the second half and scored nine. So that tells me that uh, Gary Williams has a good team. He's getting good contributions from everybody, and his, his leading scorer, rebounder, has not really been a factor out here. There's two more for Simpkins. The game you were watching in Dayton is now over. Western Kentucky has defeated Michigan in overtime in Dayton. Two-minute mark remaining here in Salt Lake. Michigan loses, losing. That ends the run of the Fab Five at Michigan. Jimmy King and Ray Jackson being the last of those five. Rogers finishing for Gonzaga. Two Big Ten teams playing today, both losing in the first round. Minnesota and Michigan went out. Two Pac-10 teams have also gone out, Arizona and Oregon. Now somebody needs to throw a ball away here because both benches want to empty. There's another rebound for Keith Booth. Maryland led by 15 at the half. Gonzaga closed to within six early in the second half. And then the Terrapins hit some threes that put this one away. Kyle Dixon fouling for Gonzaga. One minute and three seconds to play, and that allows both teams to bring in the reserves. And for Gonzaga, some final games. Man, you saw it being hugged right there. Jason Rubright of Gonzaga is our Chevrolet player of the game for the Bulldogs. A terrific effort for the senior with 13 points and six rebounds. And X Re Hip for Maryland with 15 points, our Chevrolet players of the game. X Re had a very nice evening here in the, in the game. As his dad watches on, but the number, or what can't be measured by a number, is the defense that Hip played much of this night on John Rillard. Indeed. Uh, I, I just thought he did a terrific job. You know, you have one guy on a, on your opposing team, John Riley in this case, who's an excellent scorer, likes to catch the ball and shoot, but if he takes a, an extra moment, an extra half a step to get that shot off, you have a chance to defend that. x ray Hip did an outstanding job of staying close enough to deny that shot. A 21-point night for Dwayne Simpkins. John Neep now in as the point guard for Gonzaga. John really leaving the ball game in his final game for the Bulldogs. 11 points for really. And an out of bounds Nemeth on the sideline. 35 seconds. Welcome to those of you watching the Michigan Western Kentucky game in Salt Lake City. The Maryland Terrapins about to advance in the second round. Gonzaga in blue closed to within six points of Maryland early in the second half. The Terrapins used some great three point shooting of their own. And fine defense against Gonzaga's guard, John Rilling, to advance. Saturday here, it will be Texas and Maryland. And uh, ignore that 11 in front of Texas's name. They played like a much better team than an 11 seed tonight. I think it's going to be a very fun game to watch because both teams like to get the ball up and down the court. And that's one of those games where you have to talk about who takes better care of it. Maryland forces 
they do a good job of forcing about 17 turnovers a game, but Texas forces 23 turnovers for their opponents on the season. Cincinnati survived a, a tough battle with Temple here today. They'll play UConn Saturday afternoon. Gary Williams in his return to the Maryland bench. You can tell he coached, but certainly not the Gary Williams pitcher you're accustomed to seeing. No, but Gary did a good job. He also got help from his assistant, Billy Hahn, who helped him when he was out. And the Terrapins took care of business tonight. As soon as uh, Gonzaga made a run, they were able to get some second win and put the game away. Joe Smith scoring just nine points tonight. Foul trouble hampered him, but Maryland picked up the slack. And the Terrapins, with a great team effort, able to beat Gonzaga and advance to a second round meeting with Texas. Maryland 87, Gonzaga 63. We'll join Jim Nance in New York right after this message.